I'll now demo using an arbor press to press a black powder rocket motor. That's my modified one ton Harbor Freight Arbor Press, which will put out 2,000 pounds of force. This is my larger three ton Model 1.5B Dake Arbor Press, uh, which I use for larger motors and I actually use it mostly for all the motors. Uh, except really small ones. Uh, the thing I like about an arbor press is I can put out instantaneous force, apply the force quickly, and release the force quickly. So when I'm not using a tube support, it's beneficial to not apply force for a long extended period of time. So arbor presses make for very quick, efficient uh, rocket motor pressing, if I can put out enough force with one of them. I'll be pressing 7 8 inch, uh, 2 pound black powder rocket motors on the uh, one to modified one ton arbor press that'll put out 2,000 pounds which is exactly, is exactly the amount of force I want to apply to one of those motors. Once again then to make this motor I have my cut and treated tube cut and treated tube that I've marked the tip of the spindle point on I've got my tooling set the do not pass lines the top of the delay line the top of the clay line are all marked on the rammers I do have rubber o-rings on some of these rammers. The bulkhead forming rammer does have the little nipple to form the pass fire hole and also it's hollow which allows the clay to go right up through it which is nice. So I use that. I've got my cat litter, I have my arbor press, I have my P2F gauge marked with 2,000 pounds of force on it, I have my Winnaker 39J delay, I have my, my propellant all mixed, my spec sheet, my sketch of the motor. For this particular motor, a 7 8 motor, I'll be using a shallow one tablespoon of clay for the nozzle, and I will be using a round one teaspoon for the fuel increment. And so I'm pretty much ready to, I've got a funnel to introduce the composition and clay into the tube. So I'm pretty much ready to start pressing a motor. For the motor then I'll put my tube on the spindle in the right direction with the mark where the tip of the spindle is going to be on the side of the tube. My hollow first rammer, the nozzle forming first rammer, does have the paper tube up inside it to center the tip of the spindle inside the tube when it's pressed. I will use a shallow one tablespoon of clay which means I knock out just a little bit of the clay from the one tablespoon scoop. Put that into the tube. Shake it back and forth to level it out. Center the spindle tip, get the rammer started. And that centers the spindle tip in there. And I will press to Two thousand pounds of force. That has brought it to my top of the nozzle line on the rammer, and I can just barely feel a bulge in that tube where the nozzle is. And indeed the spindle tip is nice and centered in that tube, which is nice. A little bit of clay will form on the inside of that rammer's hole, so I'll clean that out. Now I'll start with propellant. This has been slightly dampened with a half of a percent of moisture. And I want to use round one teaspoon increments of the propellant. And that has brought me up to my change rammer line on the first rammer, so I'll make sure it's good and cleaned out. 
clean any wax off the outside of the rim with some steel wool. And my lines are still nice and fresh on that rammer. So now I'll switch to the next longest rammer. I do have a rubber o-ring on that one. I'm always checking to make sure I'm not getting anywhere near my do not pass line accidentally somehow. You can see what I mean by how the arbor press goes very quickly with this kind of pressing and I can apply the pressure and release it very quickly so I'm not in any danger of damaging the tube during the process. And I am right to the switch rammer line on that rammer. Clean out the hole, clean off the spindle, double check the uh, switch rammer line which does need freshening up on this rammer. And I'll switch to the third rammer. This rammer will bring the propellant right up to the tip of the spindle. This propellant, as coarse as it is, slightly damaged, doesn't require any dwell time, any application of the force or pressure for any significant amount of time. So as long as I bring it up to the 2,000 pounds, I release it immediately. And the way to tell that is that if I bring it up to 2,000 pounds and hold pressure on it, hold force on it, does the pressure start to go down at all? Does the rammer move any farther into the tube? And it does not with this propellant. So instantaneous application of force is all that's needed. Now I've felt how much, it looks like I need one more increment at least of the pellet. And I, I know the feel 
of applying that much force, 2,000 pounds of force with this press. I'm going to consolidate that comp with the solid rammer just a little bit. And I'm going to see if I can fit the last increment in under the ram of this press, which I cannot do. So I'm going to pull the P2F out of there. And I'm just going to feel and apply that same amount of force without the P2F in there. Now I am up to the switch rammer line. There was a little plug or propellant in the end of that rammer which would indicate that I am up to the tip of the spindle. I clean out the hole, clean off the rammer, and freshen up the switch rammer top of the spindle line. Set that rammer. And indeed, as I look down in there, I can see the tip of the spindle and the top of the propellant is right flush with the tip of the spindle. Now I'm going to switch to wind 39 and I'm going to use my solid rammer and I do have a top of the delay line marked on that rammer. I'm going to use the same size propellant scoop and press wind 39 J delay in there until I get to my top of the delay composition line. I'm keeping my eye on the do not pass line to make sure I'm not getting too near that while I press that first increment of delay composition. of that delay. I'm using three quarters of delay drilled back to five eighths in these motors for the kind of delay I like on these motors. So I ran out of camera battery there but uh, now I'll press the last bit of delay composition. So that has Brought me right up to my top of the ley line. I'll push the O-ring down to the top of the tube, compare that with the sketch. And that, uh, actually I do want just a fuzz more delay in there. The delay is real critical in terms of getting the heading to display at just the right moment, depending on the type of heading I'm putting on this. And that is perfect. So my delay has been pressed. Now I want to introduce uh, two of the propellant scoopfuls of bulkhead clay. That usually brings it right up to about the top of the tube. Yep. Now with the nozzle forming rammer, Make sure that hole is all clear. Okay, I got a little bit of stuff in there from last time. There we go. Now I'll use the nozzle or the uh, bulkhead forming rammer that forms the bulkhead pass fire hole automatically. And it's important when I'm pressing the bulkhead to make sure there's not a lot of tube length to support that bulkhead forming rammer, so I want to make sure that rammer is going into the tube nice and straight as I apply force to it. So I double check that as I go. And that is going in pretty nice and straight. So I'll apply pull, apply full force on that. Well, it's just a little crooked. If I apply force on there with it too crooked, that motor can try to spring right out of there, which is not a good thing. And that's a nicely consolidated bulkhead now. Clean out the clay from the hole in the rammer. 
that's all nice and clean. Now I have a fairly nice hole formed in the bulkhead of that. And I've got a drill bit that same size that I'll just hand twist in there just to clean out any clay that is at the bottom of that hole and take it about on my sketch I've got it drilled into that um, I've pressed the delay composition to about three quarters of an inch thick and I want to drill into it about one eighth of an inch one trick I can do is mark on this drill bit how deep I want to go into that bulkhead I want about an eighth of that bit sticking out before it gets to the tape that I have on there. So I just drill in there until I'm about that deep into the delay composition. Just double checking that then leaves that then leaves five eighths to the tip of my spindle which is exactly what I wanted. Now I will use the same process uh, that I used with the hand rammed half inch motor to remove the motor from the spindle. Once again holding the press onto that motor putting the solid rammer into the hollow top end of the motor gripping that, that hollow area very firmly with the channel locks and just twisting twist that motor right off of there. I had lubricated this spindle before pressing the motor. So now I clean the spindle up a little bit. Hit it with a shot on all sides with this dry lubricant. And it'll be ready to go next time. And now that motor is ready to go. So I don't know when I'm going to use this. I'm going to mark this a uh, 70, 20, 10 BP motor. And I'll put that into safe storage until I use it. Nice bulkhead pass fire hole. Easier than drilling through all that clay. Nicely, uh, nicely formed clay nozzle and a nice motor with, without any significant uh, imperfections in the tube wall from that pressing.